Good afternoon, YouTubers. This is uh, Cyrodyne24, and I'm here to talk about air compressors. As we all know, air compressors are a really good necessity for uh, any kind of work, such as working with your car, small engine work, um, woodworking, construction, anything like that, even just like inflating tires or inflating basketballs. I mean, there, it's a really good thing to have for your house and I got several of them but I got two of them in my garage right now and I'm going to show you what they are and pretty much show you what the, dif the differences between them and also the applications for them so let's take a look at them As we can see right here, for the first air compressor, it is uh, Master Force, which is made, which is strictly sold at Menards. Now, this is what I would consider a construction grade for a lot of your uh, trimming applique, you know, for trimming, wood trimming, uh, framing, roofing, because you definitely would need a compressor like this. Because one thing they do a lot of nailers look for is uh, CFM rating which is cubic uh, feet per minute now with this now with this air compressor it has a two horsepower motor as you can see right here it is it is electric and it pulls about 14.2 amps so if you have a standard 15 amp circuit it's really good it's not going to it's not going to trip your breakers or anything like that and with this particular one it is actually oil driven so with oil driven ones there are a little there's a little bit more work involved with it you always have to make sure that the oil level is correct and also that the oil is clean so and also periodically you will have to change the oil on them it's not for me it's not that big of a deal but since I only use it for like construction and trim applications it's perfectly all right I always run my nail guns with it you know I run a framing nailer pallet nailer roofing nailer finishing nailer stapler bread nailer and as you can see right here this is the actual master control you have your on switch which uh, once you flip it on, that's all you need to do. Everything's all automatic. And if we look right over here, we have the two. We have two different gauges. We have one, this one right here, which is our tank pressure, and this is uh, this is your regular the pressure that you can actually regulate in the tank itself. I mean, for your tools, because this is the regulator right here. You turn it. You turn it out for more uh, for more tank for more psi. You turn it in for a little for smaller psi. Usually, applications like this is um, if if you're doing like a certain project. Let's say you're doing fencing work, and you're trying to nail pickets onto the uh, onto the two by fours. You would probably want to dial the setting down to a low setting so that your, your nails are not going to go pretty much all the way through to the pickets through the pickets so that they can be flush and as you can see right here here is a quick connector these things are awesome this thing is a little bit heavy but it does but it's easy to pull around it's got rubber isolation feet on it that sort of help cut down on the noise it's a four gallon tank. You have your first drain, you got your first tank drain right here, and then you got your second tank drain right here. I mean, it's a really good compressor. I've only had it for a few months, but I've used it on, I've used it on fencing jobs and also on a roofing job. So believe me, it does really, it does a really good job. I mean, other good compressor companies out there like Campbell Hosfeld, uh, Rigid is another good company. 
I mean, there's tons of compressors out there, but believe me, do your homework and read the customer reviews because you want to make sure that you get a good compressor and not something that's just going to die on you. Now, the maximum PSI on this one is 125 PSI, which is completely all right. I mean, you really need to concentrate more on the CFM, the CFM rating on this, which is 4.0, which will work with any kind of nailer because you don't want to get someone with a low CFM rating because then your compressor is going to work harder and your compressor is not going to last long. And because since this is also oil fit, this is an oil compressor, the motor will actually have a lot more life to it. So let's go take a look at the other compressor that we have. Now this is just like the other compressor I have that's actually in my car right now. Now this one right here is a Sears Craftsman. Now this is what they call a maintenance-free air compressor. Now what the maintenance-free means that there's no oil to it. So it's it's pretty, you know, it's pretty user-friendly. Let me just get this thing up here. Let me show you. Let me move it over here. Yeah, I had to put a new cord on it and unfortunately the bunch of crap popped out of it so I got to get it fixed take it up to my grandpa's and get it fixed. This one is a four horsepower, 25 gallon. This is what they call horizontal design. They do have vertical designs where the tank is pretty much stands up and the motor is either sitting on top of the tank or on the bottom, close to the bottom of the tank. You know, that's the designs nowadays. Um, this one pulls about 13 amps. It does a it does a pretty it you know it's another good air compressor to have. It's not gonna it doesn't really trip the breakers that much. Um, just like this one, you know you got your tank pressure and your re regulated pressure gauges. Unfortunately, the regulator does not work on this. I do not know why it doesn't, but oh well. And. Of course, this originally came with uh, came with a hose connected to it, a 25 foot hose. I decided to get rid of that and put a quick connector on it. I mean, you can buy these pretty much at any home improvement store. I bought this one from Harbor Freight because it was a pretty good deal. You also have a safety valve here, which is the same exact which the other compressor over there, the small one over there, does have a safety valve. That's just in case if you're uh, if the if the tank is if the motor is working too hard and if the pressure is too much inside the tank that the safety valve will kick in and actually release the pressure. And also with this one, it does have a tank drain on it. It's on the bottom over here. You, it's kind of really hard to see. But this is not the stock valve. This is a valve that actually my grandfather had in his house. A uh, piece of plumbing. So we use that. And believe me, it's a lot easier. You do have the rubber isolation mount on it. So with this particular kind of air compressor, the applications you would use this for would be if you were using like air ratchets, impact wrenches, Anything like that that actually requires a lot of air movement. I mean, tools like that, automotive tools, definitely need you. You would have to at least have, I would say, at least 20 gallons or better. Because if you don't, then your air compressor is going to be cycling a lot, which then puts a lot of stress on the motor, which means you're not going to get much life out of it. I mean, this compressor, I believe, is from 1994, so, I mean, yeah, it's 2011, so this, co this compressor is lasting, a long, is, has, is lasting a long time. So, when you hear people saying, talking about that uh, oil-free air compressors don't last as long as the oil-fed ones, believe me, they are, they're, they're wrong. I mean, they're pretty much judging it on air compressors that are built nowadays. I mean, this one, like I said, was built a long time ago, so it's actually built pretty strong. So, these are the types of compressors you can get. 
and uh, hopefully this will actually give you a little bit of insight and give get some ideas for you thinking on if when if you want to buy a new compressor or if you're a first time buyer at least you'll get to know what's out there and if you have any questions by all means send me comments and i will post more videos or comment on it y'all have a great day youtubers